There we are. Let me see here. Turn the damn emojis off. Okay, we should be good to go. Whoever would like to join, the link's at the top. Come on in. Either that or it's going to be the shortest, shortest of the shorts. <laughs> okay. Hey, Waypoint, how you doing? Hello, hello. Yeah, um, I got two ships this afternoon. They're both uh, federal nav um, um, ocean-going ships that have come into the Great Lakes, and uh, they're posted. And um, so, yeah, it uh, it's going that way. Um, don't know if anybody else is going to be here. Um I know that uh, Captain Joe was going to be busy. I think he had a, another banquet tonight. Oh, Skyfly, you inspired you to buy a new drone today. What'd you buy? Here comes Justin now. Skyfly, what did you buy? What's up? Hey Justin, how you doing? How's how's the car situation? Uh, we can't go back till the first, so that's when they made the appointment for. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's still, but it's still drivable, right? Yeah, it's just keeps bringing up that code, so I'm gonna go get to take a look at. Skyfly bought a DJI drone this afternoon because he was inspired by all the drone talk. What's up, Joel? Brian, how's it going? I think Joe was at a, um, didn't he have a, another deal this evening? Yep, he had another. Uh, another banquet or something? Banquet to go to tonight. Yeah. So he was probably not going to be around until later. Depending on how late that goes. And I know that Laura and uh, David are busy, busy with their grief management. Well, it it, it I've been doing it so long, it I, I've gotten pretty good at it. Now, orbiting's not easy, even around a stationary object. It's hard to do, let alone a moving object. What's up, Jonathan?
Jonathan, how's it going? What's up, Mark? Mark White's here. Welcome, Mark. <laughs> Hi, Paul. How's it going, Mark? What's up, Mark? Fine, thank you. Good. Sarah's here. She's on her way home, she says, uh, Justin. Justin, yeah, Sarah. She, she had to take her mom to the hospital. She fell in the driveway there earlier. Oh, really? Oh, hurt her side, so. Yeah. Should be all right, though. Skinned up her knee pretty bad, too. What's up, y'all? Hey, hey, Joe. there's Joe. I thought you weren't going to be here tonight. I got a banquet at six. Oh, okay. So that your, your, your six o'clock would be our seven o'clock, right? Yeah, no, he's, I got a little time. He's on the same yeah, time I'm, as us. I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm no, central. He said no, uh, it's not. Oh, I thought you were Eastern. Ooh, I'm central. We're in the best uh, Oh, so it's only four o'clock there. Okay. Yep. Four oh seven. Yep. Now it's tonight, boys or girls? Girls tonight. I get to watch the coach talk about each one of them and cry. <laughs> Is that what they do? She does. She was talking to me this morning when I handed her the picture she needed. And she said, I'm almost crying already. She she needs to be crying on this group. Because this group should have got her to the championship and they missed. Yeah, this is more of a formal deal, almost formal deal. You oh, can't go in there. You don't go there tonight in blue jeans, you know. So I'm sitting in the back because the blue jeans fit me good, man. And I'm sitting in the back saying, well, what pants do I have that are going to fit me good? Because I've lost so much weight. So I throw on a, a hat. I was going to put khakis on in a, in a different kind of darker shirt. And I put the khakis on, and it just, I mean, they swallow me. And I'm looking at them and saying, boy, I lost more than I thought. So I went digging and I found a pair I got on and the khakis that I had were 48 29. The wow. ones I have on me that are fitting comfortable are a 42 29. Wow. So I've got six inches off my waist. That a boy. You keep and going. I quit, eating, I quit eating my son's candy. He ain't paying attention to me. Ignore that. That's 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 a good thing. <laughs> Yeah. What's your uh, uh? You never got the candy last time. I take it he uh, overpowered you. I got my own. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not messing with him with his candy. No way. He's over there on the sofa, not even paying attention to me. He don't give a shit. He's not paying any attention to you. No, because if he starts paying attention to me, he's gonna start mouthing off again. <laughs> Did you get to watch any of the series on Netflix, The Gentleman, Justin? No, I haven't watched it yet. I've just watched four episodes this afternoon. It's good. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start watching that probably tonight. Mm -hmm. mm. Trying to don't give up on, on it. Don't give up on it after the first like twenty minutes seems a bit weird. Because it, it's different. It's one of those ones that kind of starts off slow. Yeah. Okay. It, like, it starts off strange rather than slow. Yeah, I'll tell. I'll give it a shot tonight. Because I mean, it's not American. It's based in the UK, so everything's British accents and British oh, well, sports I, and things I like that. The mo I watched the movies. So. All right. I like those. So I'll watch it. 
<laughs> Dana Point, what's up? Cool cat, how's it going? Okay, I, I got a, I got a thing. Justin, I got a question for you. My Justin, you. What can I get at at um, at Keith Young Steakhouse for fifty dollars? But you've been to Keith Young. Dana Point. Oaks Association. I thought you were going to tell me a salad. Ooh. Take it. That's a place, Dana. Not a name. Michael. Lance. What's up, Lance? Oh yeah, Sarah likes that show, the the British Bake Off. She likes watching uh -huh. it. The Great British well, Bake Off. What's not to like? People making cakes. Yeah, she likes that show. She watches it. I was wrong. He didn't go to Keith Young's. He's never been there. Uh, wrong restaurant. Yeah, he went to Chifuncto's, which is just a bad brother. Okay, well, then you just take. <laughs> he said, take, he said, your phone is probably worse. <laughs> take a couple of credit cards with you, get dressed up, and go in there. <laughs> Tell you, you, if you drive into Keith Young's, you better have a Porsche or a BMW or a Mercedes. I go in there and they, they're not even going to let me park in their parking lot. <laughs> oh, turn up in a taxi then. <laughs> I'm going to drive up, they're going to say, you're coming to clean the thing in the back? Go around the back. <laughs> uh, servants' entrance is in the back. Yeah, go around <laughs> the back. What's up, Steve? How's it going? I'm going to call up one day for lunchtime and get me a kiddies menu. I should be able to cover that. <laughs> Happy meal. Mm -hmm. They got a they got a kitty's menu on there. It was real, it was crazy. Oh, Dana Point. That was uh Steve's channel. Steve Carpenter's. It was his other channel, Dana Point. Was it? Yeah. All right. He said, oops, wrong channel. And then he came in and said, Well, I'm back on my personal channel. Yeah, because it it was a Dana Point Boaters Association. Is Donald still uh, still working on his car or no? Yeah, it'd be. Don't know. He was uh, he's not... he's supposed to be doing the second coat today. That that uh, yeah. But nobody's yeah. been on all afternoon, so. Yeah, I'm not sure if he is or not. Well, usually he comes and checks it checks in with uh, Justin. I haven't been live. Well, I he know, comes in on the live know. streams, but he doesn't really message me on Messenger a lot. And Dave and Laura haven't been uh, live because uh, they've been having a funeral for the Finch. Yes. Steve Carpenter, how you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello, Steve. Now that I know who you are. <laughs> right, it's a better Steve Dana Point scares so you. So Sarah says she watched a great British Bake Off. Yeah, she likes that show. On Netflix. Mm -hmm. There's wow. a lot of... Uh, Netflix has been picking up a lot of foreign uh, stuff over here. Last... Yeah, I mean, it's just on ordinary television here. Like they've been picking, like they have a lot of stuff from South Korea on there now. A lot of TV shows. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, ho I hope that in the future, maybe AI can can uh, work Good on. Good evening, uh, TJ. Lining the uh, mouths hey, with uh, the voiceovers. Because that's the norm. That's the one thing I don't like watching. I don't. I hate watching shows where the mouths don't line up. 
Y'all know what it is. It just annoys the living shit out of me. What's up, TJ? Sarah says hi to Captain Joe. I have absolutely no idea where the case. The um, I don't know where Gitchy is. I never heard the whole story. Did you get the whole mm -hmm. story, Justin? Why she didn't go? Or yeah, she switched. Uh, she had to switch with a coworker. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> They said it'll probably be next month before she gets out there. Just as well. I don't think the weather's all that good right now. Is the weather ever good in the UK? <laughs> On occasion. It's been raining today. It was nice yesterday. It's just been windy today and a little cloudy. I haven't had any rain, though. At least not in my area. It's so windy as shit, though. Tim Jackson, how you doing, Tim? What's up, Tim? Morning, Tim. So she's going to take how long to get out there? About a month, you said? Yeah, yeah, get another she, another shot at it. Yeah, she had to switch uh flights or switch, I guess, shifts with another co-worker, so she wasn't able yeah, to you, go. You out know there. the real story behind this. They have a major upgrade of software and hardware. Gotta reboot the system. <laughs> so do you think that all those biscuits and toffees and chocolates and stuff that's Laura's packed into a box for Gitchy to bring back to you, Justin. Do you think in a month's time she'll still have the same amount in that box? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, David did yeah, say David did yeah. say if he didn't uh if for some reason she's gonna not gonna be able to get there for a while, they're just gonna chuck it up and mail it, chuck, suck it up and mail it. So I don't know how expensive <laughs> that's gonna be, but yeah, that's gonna be expensive. Hurt. In about a month, they'll rebuy it. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put a pass Laura to dig in there. <laughs> What's up, Jim? That'd be the Jeremy. easiest way to do it: use it and buy it again closer to the time. Yeah. yeah. So, so at least it doesn't get short dated. She's gonna be on one of her streams eating one of them. Well, I don't know if Candy does. Candy, He's on yours. Does Candy get short dated? Yeah. Well, it depends what it is. I, I think most of the time candy doesn't sit around that long. But, Our uh, stuff probably has a longer shelf life over here because we use more preservatives and shit in our food. Yeah. Mm. So. Tim's in the chat. Don't talk about them. I mean, they are usually used by dates, uh, sell by dates rather than used by dates. And, and Joe, I would have never said that about Steve. I mean, I don't. Well, I know. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't realize he was in the chat. <laughs> What's up, Steve? Hello, gentlemen. Hey, Hello, Steve. Steve. How's, how's the California life doing? Oh, it's uh, nice today, actually. We got a beautiful sunny day. I was down flying uh, down the harbor, taking pictures of all the construction. And yeah. that's, when, that's when I, I looked over and I, I saw you guys are on and I'm going, oh, I logged on. I was on our, our Boaters Association channel when I logged in and didn't realize I was not on my own channel. <laughs> I know that looked familiar, too. I was like, oh, that channel looked familiar. I just couldn't think of who it was. Yeah, you've seen the logo of me wearing it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Taken uh, flying over of how the, the quote-unquote leasee of the harbor now uh, with their construction going on, um, has this taken over the day use boating and uh, restriping all the parking lots and fencing off areas? And yet they don't have an approved construction parking plan, but they're already doing it. Uh, looks like Tim only got a four hour minimum today. Guess he didn't have to go to work. Wow. Oh, that's bummer. So is, he, does that mean he's coming on here? 
I have no idea. Well, it's what nine o'clock here. So it's seven o'clock in the morning there still. <clears throat> the rain must have cancelled his work site. Seems like is what he's saying in the chat. We had rain on Saturday. You came through here at, at in the morning and went till about twelve thirty, one o'clock. And by two o'clock, the sun was out, bright and sunny. Heavy rain. It was moderate, not heavy. Yes. We got yes. we got. They're expecting heavy rain this this uh, unfortunately Easter Sunday. I think I think Tim was getting heavy rain in Australia on the work site because he said that he was getting all wet. Yeah, he ended up getting a four hour min, which means I sent him home early. 5 20 uh, p.m <laughs> yeah for you jim <laughs> i'm closer yeah. towards I'm, I'm closer towards tim's time minus a day because <laughs> if they if they call him within a certain time period of him supposed to be there or he they, they shut the site down before four hours they have to give him at least four hours pay yeah show what they call yeah. show up pay yeah yeah, yeah. Which means he either they either called and canceled right before he was leaving for work, or he got there and then they canceled sometime after, right after he got there. Well, what he said in the chat just now, he says, "I'm at work for four hours, so three hours left." Uh, okay, so oh, so he's got a whole day then. He's got to stay. Oh no, there. he's just only doing four hours. That's all he's, he's got doing. a half day because he's been working like sixteen hour days. Yeah, all well, ten, twelve hour days. Well, it will be finished by 10 o'clock in the morning, according to that, then. So we're getting your rain tonight around midnight to 3 in the morning. It's coming through here. It's headed your way, yeah. Yeah, we got winds. I don't know what the winds are now, but they were, they were gusting in the, in the 40s. Well, that's what we had over the weekend on Saturday. I was going to go down and fly the harbor on Saturday. We went down Saturday morning and had breakfast down there. And I mean, it was like 35, about any 20 to so, 30. And then it was hitting gusts of the bore. What's so up, Breaker? 1731 right now. I'm yeah. Not. yeah, I was in the back and I could hear it in the trees. And uh, Cleo, the little one, came up to me and she's looking up at me and looking at the window. Like, what the hell is going on outside? She gets nervous anytime the weather changes like that. Mm -hmm. But that's supposed to come through. So that means you're getting it again Sunday. So we'll get it next, next, let's see, probably about <clears throat> Wednesday, Tuesday. We'll get something else. Yeah. We get it two to three days later. Well, you're you're getting what we got on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll be getting the prediction, like I say, it's, uh, I hadn't brought it up, but I, they're predicting some heavy rain coming in uh, on the weekend coming up for us. Yeah, we're due for another good one. We've but been yet, getting them about, about once a week. But yet they're predicting it's going to be a drought summer. You know, the yeah, rest of the right. year is going to be a drought as they're predicting again. Yeah. Hey, Paul, I was this morning, I was sitting here and I was trying to work on some things, like some of the pictures I've got to do. Yeah. And all of a sudden I get an email from one of the moms telling me uh, about junior ROTC pictures. Can she get one of the older pictures? And I looked down at the date and I said, oh, shit, I got junior ROTC all day on Wednesday. I didn't have the envelopes sent out or nothing. Wow. <laughs> I, I hurried up, printed the envelopes, ran to the school. And gave them to him about eleven o'clock, mm. and and the colonel looked at me and I said, "I totally forgot." He said, "I'll give them up. We'll give them out today and tomorrow. That way, the parents know about it and they'll start paying me. And then I'll get a few. I don't make a lot of money off of them. It might be like maybe three to five hundred. Yeah, you but know, three not to five hundred is nothing to sneeze at. Oh yeah, it pays a couple of bills. Yeah, I actually you, need to pay a bill with that one." Don't worry, Joe. I'll give you whatever a pass. I make on that's going on one bill. Don't worry, Joe. It's pretty good for less than a day. I'll give you it a helps pass to cover. It helps to cover the overhead. 
Hey, uh, Justin gave you a thumbs up and a passing grade, he says. No, I know. I was going to say, I'll give him a pass at his age, you know, for forgetting. Pass at his age. <laughs> okay. uh, well, I will take that one because I'm not going to flip you off on that one. <laughs> yeah, they're predicting. I, uh, that, was, that was all me. <laughs> They're predicting 81% chance of rain on Saturday of, uh, of moderate rain and um, 78 on Sunday and 56 on Monday. Percent. Now they're saying we might not work till next Monday. Oh, so you're going to end up having all damn week off. Who? That's not good, Tim. That much rain. Wow. They need to flood the fucking well, website. Well, these traffic control that out, out, outside wow. construction stuff, so I imagine the yeah. trucks and stuff can't move, you know? Well, they're doing a lot of cement work and stuff there, too, so yeah. Well, that'll put a stop to it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> and it may be in a spot or two where it gets flooded really bad, too, so. Yeah. And depending what the soil conditions are. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Are they completely graded out? Do you know? It's it's some water treatment plant they're building right on the coast. Oh, okay. For desalinization. Dominic. 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 Yeah, it's a it's one of those desalinization water plants that they're building. Oh, that's we're getting ready to put one in here. Hmm. Yeah, California should have done that a long damn time ago. Yeah, no shit. Well, Catalina, yeah. Catalina Island has one. That that's makes where sense. They, that's yeah. where they get their, uh, you know, their fresh water from. Talking about there's a damn drought and the, there's technology to do that, and yet they haven't done it. And Yeah, I don't get that. They should have done that years ago over there. Because technically they could fill up all the <laughs> reservoirs and shit that are empty, you know, or, or going empty. Well, you know what pipe. they did just inland from us here um, in the town of uh, Rancho Santa Margarita? You, you, knew, you heard of Mission Viejo, you know, when oh, you yeah. lived out here. It was there. Rancho Santa Margarita, I don't know if it was in here when you were here or not. Uh, I don't but know that one. Yeah, they yeah, had, that too. With the, what they did is uh, they built a 1.2 billion gallon reservoir. And what it's for, oh. it's uh, for recycled water. So what they're doing is, is when they run it through the, uh, the the sewer plant, it actually just pumps it up the hill above to where this reservoir is, and then they store that. So it's processed going up there, and then from there it'll run it down, and then they can process that through for all the you know landscaping uh, you know recycled yeah. lines going down. Yeah, it's uh, it's what we call reclaimed water here. Yeah. It's not really for not drinking, drinking water. but uh, you can use well, it they're, for they're, they're had for the, So the toilets had it and the urinals had it, and it was recycled to flush. Mm. We don't do recycled water. Everything's just the same water. Yeah, I yeah, shouldn't lot, say recycled, reclaimed. Yeah, mm. a, lot of, a lot of cities around here will take sewage water and turn it back into drinking water. It's kind of nasty to think about, but they do not it. Not for me. And then when well, you I hate to it, I hate to tell you anybody's been in the service and you've been out on the front lines you've probably drank to a while it's been recycled. And well, usually you'll you. <laughs> yeah, you, usually you'll taste the two all the damn chemicals and shit in it. No, it's Ugh. it's you won't that nowadays it's totally changed. City water's fucking disgusting though like it always has that chemical you taste. We're like, pretty lucky here I have to say. We're just high in minerals so well, see, like my dad had, he had a, a, a well on his house out, mm -hmm. out in the desert, and it came from the Mojave River underground. And I'll tell you what, that water tasted like bottled water. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. like it tasted so fresh. And, and then it was, it was ice cold because it was like his well, I think, was like 200 feet deep or something. Wow. And it would come up and it would just be ice cold. And it was just, I mean, it would, you tasted like you were drinking bottled water. Mm hmm. Really good water. Well, at uni, one of the units in my civil engineering was public health, and that included water supply, water treatment, and sewage. 
So I went through all that. Oh, okay. Figuring out what was what and everything. So I'm quite happy with whatever it is they do to it because I know it works. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, they just uh, <clears throat> they just put out a big article, and uh, they've got the the test wells going in now because where it's going at is you know when I you see the pictures here of the harbor, well, just if you were to go this way on the coast, just on the coast, that's um, uh, Doheny State Park, and actually the wells are going to go under the park, so they've got campsites shut down now while they're putting these test wells in. And it's different than other ones. It's they're on slant wells, so they're going in. So the water's just being filtered through the sand. So you're not having all these, you know, pipes and stand-up pipes. You're going to worry about fish getting into it and all kinds of other stuff going into it. It's going to be naturally just pulling from the sand, kind of like what a regular well would do. Mm -hmm. Damn, can't It'll be third. 13 or 14 wells, and then they can up, shut them down to do the cleaning and maintenance hey, on them and still keep running. What's up? What's up? Tim, how are you, sir? Hey, Tim. Yeah, shit weather. Hey, Why well, did you bring weather. a bar of soap with you? You can get out there oh, and you get only a shower. Got, you only got three hours to work? Yeah, well, we're, yeah, he's going to can it. Only doing a four hour men today. They're just sitting down there and swimming along their thumbs. The uh, block arrived today, but they can't build. They so can't it's going to be like that all week, rain. though? Yeah, we're supposed to have rain full going until Sunday afternoon, they're saying. Oh, uh, so yeah. you for wow. sure you're going to get the whole week or no? Uh, as of now, we're not working tomorrow. We don't know about Thursday and Friday yet. Well, Friday we have off anyways. Good Friday. Mm. So, that don't know. Sucks. It's a whole week off. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it does. Like Christmas all over again for you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but, this, but this time I don't have uh, my, uh, what's the name, to use. That Long sucks, service. though, that they can't at least give you four hours for each day. I mean... Kind of, because that's kind of out of your control. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, yeah. It's construction yeah. for you. Yeah, that's right. That's casual for you. Well, Tim's the, Tim's what they call casual, so he doesn't get any of the benefits of vacation time or nothing. Mm. No. Well, construction here in the United States, you don't get vacation time unless you're in a high enough position as a, a superintendent Warman. or. A, a general yeah. foreman where you've worked a deal with the contractor. Otherwise, as a regular, as electrician, journeyman, apprentice, you don't get vacation time. Yeah, you don't get shit. No, you're right. You don't. <laughs> <clears throat> no. Well, I've been full time for 17 years. This is the first year of me being casual. So. What you been up to? Steve, been a minute since you've been on it. Yeah, hmm. but I've been busy with uh, getting stuff done with uh, multiple things on the Butters Association, uh, dealing with this. Um, I call <clears throat> them a leasee. They're the ones that are now operating our harbor. Um, it's a it, it it's it, it's a, I'll, I'll try to explain it in as quickly as possible because it's, it's so long. California has what they call um, Tidelands Trust. The harbor, the picture of the harbor you see here behind me yeah. is a Tidelands uh -huh. Trust. The trusts are owned by the citizens of the state of California. But then what happens is they grant the trust, which this trust here, Dana Point Harbor Tidelands Trust, is granted in trust to the county of Orange. Uh, and what they do is they it was granted to build a harbor. And what it is now is they put it out as a 66-year lease for a public-private partnership with this developer to come in, and they are just getting away with murder, and we've just clamped them down to the city, and we're hammering the city, because the city oversees the California Coastal Commission, which the Coastal Commission oversees this, so they oversee it for the Coastal Commission. Well, is, is, it, is it all, is it, Steve, is it basically 
the the community's looking to get more tax dollars coming in? No, because in a Tidelands Trust, all the money has to stay in the harbor. Oh, okay. Steve, That's I all. could fix your whole situation. Just move to Florida. I you know. know yep. about it no more. <laughs> but there's only <laughs> one benefit I still have. The weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do you guys do have some nice weather i mm. I, I miss uh the summers in ventura when i was younger oxnard ventura oh yeah god <laughs> dude the summers there were so nice you'd go from the damn the damn uh desert and it'd be 110 and you'd go into ventura and it'd be like 69 70 degrees <laughs> Fucking nice. big difference in temperature just going like three four hours away well, even for here in the summertime, say from here on the coast where we're at, we can be say a high during the summer, say in the high eighties, maybe you know, or, or right. mid to high eighties, and you just drive inland to Mission Viejo, or I was just talking about, and it'll be it could be up to a hundred, you know, and you're only talking twelve miles. Jesus, yep. yeah, you get that coastal breeze coming out there. Well, it's, it's not so much a coastal breeze because uh, typically. Uh, it depends on the time of year, but it's in them to where it blocks it so the breeze is stopped, but you just got the coolness of being on the coast. All right. Why do they call it a boaters association? Is it because it's not as posh as a yacht club? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We we are not a yacht club. Oh, what Steve, it is if, is you, if you didn't Steve, meet Mark, that's Mark White. He just started coming on the panel, but you've seen him in the chats. Oh, no, I know. I know who uh, who it was when I saw because I'd, I'd seen him once before. And um, Mark, what, what it is, is uh, we have yacht clubs. In fact, uh, one is at the very end of the harbor down over there, and the other one is just over the bridge right over here. But we are an association that we formed when our county wanted to revitalize, I should say, do a revitalization of the harbor. In other words, replace the docks and, and gangways and everything because they're 50-some years old. They're wearing out. Mm -hmm. So we started this organization up in order to protect this harbor because they wanted to get rid of um, 1,150 slips out of this harbor under under 25 feet oh grief yeah they just wanted to go bigger slips and everything well we fought them and we won in coastal commission so the average has to, so the average has to stay at 32 feet length overall for average for the whole harbor and um, they can only lose of the 2409 slips that are there now they can only lose 155 slips but they have to strive for zero. That's zero it. loss or zero slips? They it's have to strive for zero boat. loss of slips. They have oh, to strive for that. Mm. That's a hell of a lot of boats. Yep. Mm. Now, do most most of those boats, does anybody live on those or are they just tied up? A few, a few liveaboards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not many. Do they end up paying more if they actually live on the boat? Oh, yes. It's a 25% a fee, whatever the slip fee is, it's 25% more if, it's, <laughs> if you have a liveaboard. Right. Well, you can get you a Nevada and fly over that thing, that whole distance, and come back and have a hell of a video. <laughs> this this the slip fees aren't cheap though either are they steve no they went up uh, in 20 uh june of 2021 the 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 least amount of in from one month to the next it went up from 26 percent to 96 percent increase in slip rate from one month to the next wow so that right there by, by his right shoulder and that's his boat right there that big boat the big boat on his right shoulder yeah <laughs> That's your boat, huh? No, my boat uh, is no longer. It took on water. I had some uh, stress cracks underneath the starboard stringer. Went in and flooded the engine compartment. Went in and flooded the inside of the cabin. Wow. So there's, wow. you know, they say the two best days for a boat owner, the day you buy it, the I, day you sell the day it. You no, no, it. no. It's now, I was lucky guy. There's Three. The, third one. the day you buy it. <laughs> The day you didn't have to sell it, 
and the day your insurance company pays you 100 percent what you <laughs> paid for it there you go <laughs> oh yeah that's good <laughs> my uncle the one that was the master carpenter he built a cabin cruiser in, oh, my, wow. in my grandmother's garage he built one and he we used to go out in that thing all the time and he wound up selling it to somebody and he bought a 40 foot Chris Craft. Oh. And and Chris Crafts are beautiful. There you are. We're out in the, we're out in the middle of the Gulf in six to eight foot seas, and that thing is bouncing on mm -hmm. them on them waves. And that I mean we it was really choppy and bad. And he was a nervous kind of guy. He goes in the cabin while my cousin's the guy piloting the thing. And we're coming through and he's in there and we we're hitting these, we're coming up and coming down, hitting these waves. Bam. Bam, like this, and he keeps hitting it. And he cut, sticks his head out and he says, Put your life preservers on. We're taking on water. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and we took, we took, we said, What? We looked inside. <laughs> the whole front of the boat had, had cracked in the front, it was just gushing in. Oh, Lord. and we're, mm. we're about 15 miles out in the Gulf. Oh, yeah. That was... kind of brings to mind Leroy Jethro Gibbs from NCIS. Yeah, building a boat in his basement with no way of getting it out. Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy that actually built, a, in fact, my uh, my uncle, one uncle built a, a sailboat, concrete hull. Um, built a whole concrete hull sailboat. And another guy built one up here in, in the same design up here in Costa Mesa, which is further up the coast that's up here towards Newport Beach. And I'll tell you what, that was the big thing. When he started building the boat, it took him just shy of 18 years to build the boat before it was ready. Well, when he built it, he had this just big open backyard. Well, everybody built around him had to bring this 250-ton crane in because it had to pick up all the way out and over in order to pick it up and get it on a trailer. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was an expensive move. Yeah. Well, shoot, no, we have a we, we have a we have a pretty a very pretty harbor. Yeah, when that happened, I think I was 17 years old when that thing started gushing in water. So we all put our life life preservers on. Uh -huh. And my my cousin grabbed the C B and called it in as a Mayday real quick and gave a gave him a, a, the rig number that we would buy. Mm -hmm. And as as we we got over to the rig, as because Chris Craft won't sink, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll stay it'll stay water level, it won't sink. And we got all the way over to uh, the side of the rig, and the rig picked up our, our distress, and they had people on it, and they they came down and and tied to actually tied the boat off to the side of the rig, they let it kind of float out, mm -hmm. and got us on the rig. Called the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard said. Y'all safe. We'll be out there later. We're not coming out that right now to get you. We don't, <laughs> we don't need to. They didn't need to. It, it, it just came. We were sitting out there. It was like glass. The water, and all of a sudden, it came up. You know, it's just out of nowhere. And we were on the we were on the rig for about ten hours. And I tell you what, that was the best eating I've ever ate in my life. Mm -hmm. Stuff that, I mean, it came up that we were having steak and everything else. You know, like God, darn it. Yeah. But the Coast Guard came out and picked us up and they looked at the boat and they tied the boat onto the, onto a, a rope to the boat and drug mm -hmm. the boat all the way in. Oh my gosh. They said, no, we're not going to let it stay out here. Because <laughs> my uncle thought they were going to sink it or something, you know? Yeah. And he said, no, we're taking it. Yeah, and they pump, tied pump. it up and brought it back. Yeah. Pump, pump, pump it out. No, the, yeah, the sharks are pretty out here. We have a big assortment of them um, out here. We have great whites. Um, just, uh, if you've ever watched the discovery channel on, um, where they were, uh, had this barge thing and they, they actually float the barge down and they, they tag the shark and sedate it. And then they'll bring them on to the barge and it just brings them up enough so they can move around. They'll measure it and do blood samples and everything like that. We were going by one day and we were but the boat and it didn't dawn on me. And I'm looking over and I look at the buoy off there and it's exactly three miles right off um, uh, the nuclear power station in here, Sarah and Ofri. And that's where the boat was. <laughs> <laughs> but well, we get see. great whites out here, thrashers out here, um, and just 
um what's the other one we uh, every once in a while if the warm temperature comes up from mexico we get the warmer temperature coming up the coast you can get some hammerheads but they're going to be mainly down on the um down down low they're not on the surface you get the bullshit Gulf of mexico is full of them i'm sorry hmm? what did you say mark what did you say bull, bull sharks Oh no, we don't have bull sharks over here. Further south they do, but not here. What's the other one? Basking sharks. They're yeah. fairly peaceful. <laughs> well, you just stay in the boat, Jim. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've I, I've swam out here and surfed out here. Evening, folks. Hey, hey. Well, David, how are oh, you? David. Hey, David. How good. are you doing? I'm oh, good. Is there anyone in mm -hmm. Australia that has a 3D printer that can help me out here? I need something printing for Tim. Not me. <laughs> what? What is it? The finger? No. Oh. <laughs> Look out for the Look cat. Look out for cat. <laughs> An umbrella. <laughs> That's funny, David. That's pretty cool. What we have here, though, mainly, uh, Jim, are, are whales. The gray whales are real big, are, are going through real big right now. We had orcas earlier this year. Blue whales uh, are, are done right now for this time of year. Um, and we get some fin whales. But right now it's mainly the the uh, gray whale season because they're they're on their way up from the Gulf of Mexico and they're headed up to Alaska and humpbacks. Mm. We're really, I mean, really lucky. You can stand um, if you look where my head is here, but like right up here on the bluff, but over yeah. right about there. You can be standing right up there and just be able to watch them, and they'll be traveling within a quarter mile of the shoreline. So it's the Gulf of Mexico on the west coast, then? I always thought it was on the east. Mexico? No, it's no, the here. The Gulf Baja, of Mexico is south. Baja, California. Yeah, south, but the Gulf of Mexico. No, no the, it, the, the Mexico has the Gulf and the uh, Pacific Ocean yeah. on both sides. Yeah, we, we call it Mexico, but it's uh -huh. really Baja, California. Mm. Uh -huh. Right. But it is Mexico. <laughs> well, we just had the news here. Um, they're searching for a body out in the ocean, probably about oh, a K away from it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Body or parts of a there. body? Probably body of <laughs> a parts of a body by now with all the sharks out there. Ten pens on if the bull sharks got a hold of it yet. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> what happened? A surfer or? I think it was a surfer called in a rip or something. I don't know. Somebody called in a rip. They're out there still looking for it. They got the platform boat. They got one, two, three. We're going to see Tim on the news later. Uh, I don't know what the hell happened. They got Just drones. There my work, you. Next thing I know, there's a body in the ocean. They got they drones. Got drones flying out there, Tim. No, nah, they got five boats out there. They got the helicopter. Uh, still searching. Can't find it. They got the diver platform out there right now. The news just left. They were here for about ten minutes filming it. Were they interviewing you? They didn't come in my work site. Fuck the no. Tim's got a hell of a view though from his work site, man. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty wild. Fucking shame, huh? Well, that's too bad. I don't like to see anybody drown, especially their body out floating around in the ocean, you know? Yeah, no kidding. Uh -huh. You were wondering about the harbor, a lot of boats here. I'll show you a little, this is a short bit of this video here that I flew. It must still be caught in a rip, the body. 
So, I don't know. Fucking rip can take you five k's up. Yeah. Have you ever sat down and figured out how many boats that is? 2,409 slips for here, not counting the commercial fleet or counting the uh, 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 the commercial fishing and or the commercial fishing. So there could be up to 3,000 boats there total. Oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, about, say, 2,500 max. Okay. Oh, that's all? It's nothing. Yeah. Man, nothing. <laughs> I mean, well, well the, the biggest uh, uh, non-private harbor was Marina del Rey. It used to have 5,800 boats in it. Wow. But it's slowly lost. <laughs> slowly, slowly, slowly lost the boats uh, due to the building out of condos and stuff. hotels and everything else in the world that got added onto the, you know, shoreline. I wonder how much so, it costs. If you have a boat that slipped right at the far end of the harbor and you decide to go out for the day, by the time you reach the entrance, of the heart, you have to fuel it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's from right here, Mark. You can see my yeah. my cursor. Yeah. From right there to the end of the breakwater is one mile. It's not that far. One point six kilometers. Ooh. And this this building structure here, this is what we call it's the Ocean Institute. It's a uh, um, they have indoor aquarium and uh, they do uh, marine study and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty nice. I I, I like the big uh, condos on the, on the top of that ridge. Yeah, those are uh, actually three story um, units up there. Wow. You wouldn't like them during earth. I mean, uh, earthquake. Well, the the richer the richer the rich people will survive, Steve. You better believe wow. it; they will. Now we've got a really nice harbor. Like compared to Newport Harbor, I can I can I could leave our harbor, and I we were like right about right about there, and I'd come down the channel here, right underneath where I'm at, and then go out the uh, go out the harbor, and for me to go from here. To Newport Beach was forty five minutes, and then wow. to go and then to go to um, into the harbor to one of the restaurants we'd always go to over there because you'd make reservations for dock space, not to get in to eat. <laughs> and if you yeah. have dock space, you can get in to eat. Jody. So we'd, hello, Jody. Um, it would take forty five minutes from out just outside the harbor to get to the restaurant because it's five you know five mile an hour limit. Wow. <laughs> So y'all did notice he put his finger up there on the yacht club side. <laughs> See, he had one of those big ones. <laughs> no, not a member of a yacht club. Well, well I am. What's up, JDS? But it's American Legion in Newport Beach. Russell, what's up? Russell. Hey, Jody. Russell. Jody. What's up? Sorry, I lied to Frank Forrest. Russell. To be fair, to be fair to the sharks, I've heard the divers they eat are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, Russell, I hope you're gonna get. I hope you get it. DJI Inspire One, huh? Yeah, I have. I haven't seen Russ's uh, Fifty One Drones uh, talking about the new thing about DJI. Mm, remote remote ID, what, what is it? What is that, Jody? That is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that optional? I thought that was optional. Mm. Yeah. It, it depends <laughs> on if you, yeah. <laughs> I suppose if you're going to fly downtown New York City, it, it's not so optional, but you're not going to fly downtown New York City. Got to put in a, a permit for like a month in advance. Yep. It's like one hundred fifty dollars, and then they, if they don't approve it, you don't get the money back. And then if it's there, you can't fly; you don't get your money back. It's like stupid. 
definitely not right. Jody said, I don't know. I don't use one. <laughs> well, that is just New York City, isn't it? It's not the whole of New York State. No. No, and the city's been catching hell about it because they're pretty much putting <laughs> their own flight restrictions over the city, which yeah. technically, I guess, they're not supposed to do. So, no, it's going against been, FAA. So, I've been against catching FAA a lot of hell about that. But <laughs> New York's do done. But New York's been known to do shit without uh, that was illegal anyway. Uh, that whole stop and frisk bullshit they were doing for years <laughs> was illegal as fuck. That was so unconstitutional. And they did it for years before they finally stopped doing that. You guys remember that, to stop and frisk, where they could just stop and frisk you for no reason? Mm. Well, for some people like you, Justin, it's, it's a benefit. Oh, whatever. <laughs> They'll never find the cocaine on me. Yeah, that was being nice. I wasn't going to say nothing. No, but seriously, though, that was like one of the most unconstitutional laws of like things that they have ever done. But they did it for years without anybody doing anything about it. Yeah. Oh. I mean, everybody knows as a cop, you have to have a reasonable suspicion or cause to stop. You can't just be making shit up and be like, oh, here, let me stop and search you for no reason. Oh, your turn signal wasn't working. <laughs> Just ask my son. He'll look for anything. Well, that's why a lot of states now have gone to where they do the, uh, you know, say you have tinted windows. They can't technically pull you over for that, even though it's illegal. They have to have a secondary reason to pull you over. You know what I'm saying? Like some states have gone to oh, that JDS. Minor, stuff, minor traffic violations. They'll have to have a secondary reason to pull you over. Mm -hmm. Granted, they, it, they, it's not hard to come up with one, but yeah, yeah his, his easiest way to pull somebody over is he gets about three car lengths behind him, and he waits till they get to like a stop sign, and they make a turn without putting a signal on. If they yeah. don't put that signal on a hundred feet before, he's got him. You know, he'll light him up in a minute. But he's usually following him because. Like I said, like the two guys the other day, they saw him and they kind of slumped down and put their hoodies on. So he said, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> Y'all just tip me off. Well, over here, if you're actually in a traffic lane that is like yours, be a right turn only, and was his left turn only, yeah. you don't actually have to use a signal. Hmm, interesting. Because the lane is for turning left only, so... Yeah, if it's a right only to lane, go. Yeah, I think so. That makes sense. That would, it would be a right turn only over there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to actually ask him about that, because yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. People don't use their fucking blinkers anyway. Yeah. I'm people, and I use my... I, I love the ones that like turn their blinker on as they're in mid-turn. Yes. But we don't. We don't. Yeah. We certainly don't have a rule that you have to turn it on a hundred feet before the junction. Uh, Joe, what did you do in with the scrap from your prints? What do you do with the scrap from your prints? Jody wants to know. Landfill. Well, <laughs> <laughs> landfill. Well, I'll fight that. Landfill. Come on. Come on. Come on. Why? Well, do yeah, they have a better way to do something? Why? Why? Come on. I, wish they had a, I wish they had some kind of machine to melt it down and we can mm -hmm. do it and remake it, you know? I think they have some stuff like that, but it's not very good. I think I've heard that they do have some shit like that, but people are saying it's not really all that great. I don't and know. It isn't, it isn't worth it because by the time you melt it, you got to yeah. buy the machine to melt it. And then you don't have the same viscosity when you've done it in order then to put it into a, you know, a strand. Yeah. You don't have any to get it the right diameter. 
plus as it dries, you don't have the right kind of a atmospheric conditions to make it so it doesn't go brittle. Yeah. <laughs> my my, my blinker on six miles before. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, right. oh, maybe they've come up with a way of doing it then. Maybe that's what Jody's talking about. Just have your flashes go on. Just, that way you can turn left or right. <laughs> yes, they did. They made a machine that you can melt down and put it back through, but it, it doesn't hold the same. It's shit filament. Well, it's like that's what Steve was saying. Yeah, it doesn't have the same, right. like almost so you think like tensile strength or something. Yeah, the strength yeah, it, it's yeah. shit. It's shit. Well, now you if they could design, machine. if they could design filament to be able to do that, then you get there's a machine out there that a filament maker that you just put pellets in and everything, but you got to buy the pellets and shit like that because that's what I was going to buy. And it's uh, and, and the temperature, depending on what what you know the material is, has got to be right on the money. And then uh, a lot of things. I mean, I just know this from minerals and stuff like that. When you're you're dealing with it, you, when you're remaking or reheating, <clears throat> excuse me, you won't have the same, like I said, viscosity. But it's the same control of it. It's going to be the brittle, drier. You know, or uh, he's saying there's some companies you can send it to that yeah. will re-roll it. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, they put add, it all together. They might add shit to it to, yeah. to get it back to its original. But how much does that cost to have a bunch of scrap sent off and re-rolled though, too? I mean, I guess if you're really trying to be environmental conscious and that's your whole goal, I guess it's worth the money, but I mean how about no waste? Then you don't have to worry about it. Actually, this is what I'm surprised. I'm surprised <laughs> these real environmentalist like type states like California and some of the countries that are like that. I'm honestly surprised they haven't banned 3D printing. <laughs> well, they, well, they have for, <laughs> for guns. <laughs> well, I know that, but you know, in New York, they want to pass a law that you have to get a, uh, a special cer special certification just to have a 3D printer. Yeah, they're trying because to do that here in California. Because the gun bullshit. And it's like, it's not even that prevalent. It's not that mm -hmm. big of a thing. And, and 3D printing guns, they've already said that after one or two uses anyway, they're completely useless. So yeah. it's not like they hold up forever and you can That's just... Going to 3D print a gun. I'm going to be bothered about needing a certificate to do it. Hey, you ever heard of a bow and arrow? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to do it. I can just go down to any sporting goods store, pick one up, even a crossbow. Yep. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of knives next to me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't pick one up because YouTube don't like it. Yeah, yeah I know. You killed somebody with a well-aimed catapult. <laughs> <laughs> It came down to it. I get the samurai sword out in the back. There you go. I can irritate your eye with the rubber band, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the thing, though. It's like, I think that's so stupid. But like I said, I'm really surprised some of the real environmentalist areas of the world have not banned 3D printing yet. Like, I'm actually surprised they haven't had that argument. Oh, it's so much waste going into landfills. Because they say that about everything else. And think about how much crap people do print that's kind of not really a necessity print. Yeah. It's just start printing for fun. So when are they going to ban... Uh, that's a necessity. When are they going to ban throwaway <laughs> ballpoint pens? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. There you go, Matt Props. That's a perfect, the perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> I would never I would never print one. The thing is, is I would never even fire a 3D printed gun. I don't give a shit how well you think you made it or whatever material you used. I'm not fucking firing a 3D printed gun. No, Jody. Actually, here in the state of California, they're trying to register because uh, there's specific printers that are being used for making uh, 3D printing guns. And they're making it to where you can't buy that printer. And supposedly, the 
whatever it is, that special filament used for making the guns. Probably a carbon fiber or something. Yeah. Yeah. What was that movie where it was about the pres a guy that was gonna go kill the president and, and made it from ceramic? <clears throat> made a ceramic gun. He was out shooting, it was out there, and these two guys were out hunting in this one scene. I don't remember the name of it, but it was just a two um uh two rounds in a gun, as like a like a like a little derringer would be. And mm. he ends up killing both of them out there. The guys were out there hunting when he went and uh, they they were out there duck hunting, and he was using it to go because he, he set the whole thing up to be invited to meet the president at some fundraiser, and he brought it in different pieces and had it to come into this convention really room and assemble it. And honest, they didn't really get that from the man with the golden gun. Yeah, no, that wasn't uh -huh. it. But it, oh, you're I, funny, Jim. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, it is, wasn't ceramic. It was made out of gold, but it was his cigarette lighter, his cigarette packet, um, a pen. Yeah, the and bullets it, and were in the pen. All stuck together to make a, what's it, mm -hmm. a gun. Yeah, I wouldn't even want to be near a 3D printer gun going off, Randy, me, me either. Uh, that thing decides to blow up in your hand and you're fucked. Well, it depends on what caliber you're talking about, too. If you got Still. low enough caliber, like a twenty-two or something, you'd probably get away with it. But you're talking <clears throat> anything you 38, 30, 38, 357, 40, 50 cal, there's too much pressure. I mean, you, you always have a chance of something bad going wrong. So yeah, I wouldn't I don't even know if I'd even want to attempt that. I think that's crazy. I, I mean eventually they might be able to come up with a filament that is strong enough to where you could make a legitimate reusable gun out of it. But as current state, no. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't have it. I don't have it here. It's upstairs. I said, I'll show you a, a 40, a 40 millimeter round. I have. It's a shell oh. that was a, a testing round for the Sergeant York tank. I would be careful with that. YouTube's getting strict on showing stuff like that on live streams. Yeah. You can show it on a video, but live streams, because they don't know if you're going to do so. Well, I understand YouTube's argument, right? Mm -hmm. It's not really that that bad of a, a reason. It's because they don't want somebody live streaming a shooting or something stupid like that or, mm -hmm. you know, often themselves on a live stream. So I understand why they don't want to do it because there have yeah. been people that have done that. Yeah. And so I get why they they don't want it. Like mm -hmm. it's it, to me, it's a legitimate argument. Mm -hmm. I really can't get mad at them for it. So, well, especially with just all the you know where they had that one kid. He was a a fourteen year old kid that a bunch of uh, um, guys and girls picked him up, took him over there. Mm -hmm. and they were filming it and then beat the hell out of him. You know, inside their apartment, and then they were just laughing about it as they were beating him, beating him up, almost beat him to death. And they yeah, were live streaming I mean, it. People are fucking idiots. Dude. Yeah, let's live stream our, our, our felony crimes. Fucking idiots. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting, Jody. I'm looking at that website now. All 3D printing? Yeah. Yeah, it's the uh, the company that does the recycling. Christopher Lee. Who the hell is Christopher Lee? No, oh, you don't know. No, yeah, that's Lee. why I asked who he was. <laughs> he was an actor that Christopher used to Lee. play a vampire. Yeah. He was in loads of horror films back in the day. Let hmm. me look him up and see if Pretty I recognize him. I might write, I might know his face. I just don't know You're, his name. Yeah. yeah, he just died. Yeah. He 90. He'd have to be 90 something, wouldn't he? Certainly won't be young. Hmm. Yeah, he just died. I read about that earlier. Said he died back in June of 2015, hmm? age of 93. Oh, good to see. I'm alive. 
Unless yeah, it's a different Christopher Lee. Is it, hold on, let me. Is this a guy here? Let me show you. Is this a guy? Yeah, that's him. Yep. Yeah, it says he died back in 2015. Well, it was a vampire. You're gonna say good to see him awake. I do but, recognize him though. Yeah. But yeah. I'd... Yeah, he did. Who am I getting him mixed up with then? He did the the voiceover at the start of Thriller. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he was the man with the golden gun. That's why he was saying. He was also the man with the okay. golden gun, yeah. yeah. So he wasn't yeah. saying he just died. He was just mentioning him because he was the guy that played Chris, it. Christopher okay. Lee didn't play in the uh, oh. beginning song of Thriller. It was somebody else. Uh, it was, that one no, he didn't play it. It was his voice. No, it wasn't his voice. It wasn't Christopher Lee. All right, what are we looking up here? Thriller, the soundtrack. The and the, the, the speech at the beginning of thriller. Michael Jackson's thriller. No, no, it was it was Vince Vince uh Vincent Price. Oh, Vince. Vincent Price. Yeah. Yes, Vincent Price. Price and Apple. Yep. Thriller That's speech right. was and, Vincent Price, yeah. Yeah, yeah Price it wasn't, and Apple. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't Chris Burley. He played in horror films, yeah. But Yeah, Vincent, Vincent Price, Price, you are right. I, I was right the first time. I thought it was Vincent Price and then went mm -hmm. no. Nah. <laughs> uh, I, there was another Christopher Lee. He's an actor too, but oh, for that's... fuck's sake, Randy, that's bad. Oh, yeah, it is. What he said? I he said yeah. I had a friend commit suicide on Facebook live in the middle of an intersection about two years ago after a car accident cut his own throat live on Facebook. Jesus Christ. Oh, Damn. Well, then they have to bear knives then. No. Jesus. No. That is. Yeah. Takes all kinds. Oh, that, that sucks. Yeah. That's powerful. Well, that's why I said we have to be careful showing anything. Just It's better just not to show knives, yeah. guns, bullets, nothing. Yeah. Just like, keep all that shit off the live stream. Exactly. Didn't even show a toothpick. I should have, I should have showed you all the <laughs> video my son just showed me. He showed me a body cam. They had a uh, a fight at one of the um, the local uh, like grocery store areas. Um, there were six six uh, juveniles and four adults in the middle of the fight. And he's he's on the other side of the city, and he's got his body cam going in that Hellcat. And he's on Boston Street, flying down Boston Street, and all you're seeing is the, the lights going by like this. But he's just down the middle of the street. I said, well, how fast were you going? He's about 110. Like that. And he got there. They wound up arresting six of them. And then wow. two of them gave him the wrong names. So now, because they gave him wrong names, they'll go back and get them now. Now they got felonies. Yeah. Mm. But him and that Hellcat, man, that sucker's got some speed. I saw a lot of the cops here. A lot of the um, state troopers in Florida are driving Hellcats and Chargers. Mm. Or not Chargers, uh, Challengers. Yes, they're all better, fucking decked out. You better, you better believe it. Life is too precious. Mm. Is the Hellcat yeah. a car in its own right, or is it just a souped-up version of someone else? Uh, it's no, it's 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 pretty much its own thing. Mm. Uh, the those things I think are what eight hundred horsepower or something. They actually have two different keys, so they have a regular key fob, and then they have a red key fob. And if you get in the car with the black key fob, it only unlocks like 300 and something horse. If you get in the car with the red key fob, it unlocks the full. Full amount. Damn, full. Right. So you you have to get into the car with the red key fob in order to unlock the whole thing. Yeah, it's a charger. That's all I was trying to think of. It's a souped up charger. Yeah. It's, it's very nice. And he was going through one area where he came out of a roundabout and you could hear him dripping when he when he hit that thing. You could hear those tires just shh. 
<laughs> that's the team. Yeah. 110 the dribbling on that roundabout. The, the black guy in NCIS Los Angeles drives. Mm. That was a black charger. Used to have one. Dodge Charger. Many decades ago. And the, the thing is, the, his car, his police car, the light bar on top is so low that when he's at nighttime, you can't even tell he's a cop. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it is. It's so low. They've had people he pulled over saying, I didn't even know you were a cop. See, here's here's the two keys here. The yeah. black key is just if for like 300 and some horsepower, and then you got to get into it with the red key if you want to unlock the full potential of the car. So, so, uh, so if you're loaning your uh, kid the key for the night, you make sure you hand him the black key. The black key, right? Yeah. <laughs> or it'd be like his and her keys. Yeah, that's, that's better. Yeah, you give the wife the black key and you keep the red one. Yeah. Hello, 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 hello you Johnny. Go. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> See what happens when you leave the door unlocked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think it actually does have a valet mode built into it too as oh well. I think, but it's I think a valet they, as well. I, no, no, no. I think they actually have a valet mode that you put into the the uh dash system. It, it only gives the car like so it can't go over like 40 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour or some shit like that. Yeah, so they can't do a Ferris Bueller this guy off. Right, they're not going to be able to take the car down the road and fucking haul ass with it because they won't allow it. And then you got to put a code in when you get back in the car to unlock it. I think that the Hellcats have that in there. A well, smart move. Hmm. You give the wife the key with Kia written on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 You yeah, Ferris Bueller, you nailed it, Warren. Yeah, yeah that's right. See, Ferris Bueller's day off. Yeah. Remember the what they did to the the Ferrari in that. Yeah. <laughs> the damaging winds, sixty plus miles per hour, spin up tornadoes, isolated flooding, frequent Bend lightning, it. lightning. That's tonight. Oh, gee, many Christmas. Okay, so. Your standard one has a 6.2 liter V8 with 717 horsepower. And then they have one called the Hellcat Red Eye model version. The engine jumps to 797. And then they have a Hellcat Red Eye wide body jailbreak edition that has 807 horse. Yeah, you told me. That's insane. <laughs> So there's three ask him how many is in his. There's three different versions of it: seven seventeen, seven ninety seven, and eight oh seven. Well, his was probably. I remember back during the days when they used to have the Dodges here, and and back when the four forties were on, and the Highway Patrol got a hold of them, and then they 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 got them with the six pack carburetors on them, and one of the patrol officers we knew him over here because my uncle's owned a liquor store here in town. And he had just gotten it, and he go he comes up and he goes, says, "Hey, you want to go for a ride?" So he took us on, and we went from San of all well, here in Capistrano Beach. We made it down to Oceanside and back. We were doing one hundred and sixty some yeah. miles an hour down the old, old, old road, going on that car. And I'll tell you what, you want to stuff see stuff fly by. <laughs> Okay, so the the Hellcats do have a valet mode. Mm. You, it's on the you put it in through the the uh, entertainment system on the car through the radio. Oh. Some guy on the forum here said he turned it on when his wife drives it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the max? Yeah. Forty, you say? Uh, it doesn't. Not saying here. Uh, I think it limits it to like a hundred and something horsepower. So it's like, you know, it's, it'd be like driving a Honda Civic or something, you know, just yeah. a plain, old, <laughs> plain old, just regular car off the lot. Nothing crazy. 
you know, th that's that's got to affect the engine. I, I mean, you've got all the electronics that are doing that, but that's got to affect the engine. I don't the think... engine, the engine's designed for that kind of well, horsepower. It's designed to be get out there and and do it, its job. It could be like some of those cars where it might shut off certain certain amount of pistons. You know, maybe it goes from like an eight cylinder down to a four cylinder or something. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a way. I'm I'm sure it probably it might do that because I think don't some of the trucks do that too. Yeah, like in a fuel saving mode, they'll shut off some of the pistons. Well, it must it must be the old man in me, but I can't figure out why anybody in this world in the United States needs to have a car that goes 180 miles an hour. Just because in California, you'd never be able to use it anywhere. <laughs> Hi, Donald. You're in bumper hey, to bumper I... traffic. <laughs> Hello, Don. Yeah. Donald. Yeah. Howdy, howdy. There well, was a version. Justin, Justin's been timing you. Find out how long it's been you got here. Uh, don't let him lie to you, Donald. I haven't even asked about you. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, but there was a video of a Hellcat actually outrunning a helicopter, police helicopter, down a down a freeway. Oh yeah, if they'll do 180, the helicopter ain't going to keep up with it. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm completely wrong. He does not have a Hellcat. Oh, he does. He has the RT. He's only got 370 horsepower. Oh, but that 370 horsepower was going 110 down Boston Street. <laughs> yeah, and it's he's sure. fast. After he told you, he should have been like pussy. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have been he had us into his face. <laughs> What's it? What's it? Oh, Damn, I about... thought you had a Hellcat. I said, now you're just a wuss. <laughs> <laughs> Warren. <laughs> Warren. Mm. I suspect that has something to do with penis size. <laughs> yeah, now I can't wait to see what he's going to say. You gonna come back with a small ass remote? What? What's up, Johnny Warren? How's it going? Yeah, you know, back in like I said, back in the days, like between here and Oceanside, going down to San Diego, you could why you could get some cars and drive them down through there. But after they opened up the border patrol check station there, and they've got the truck stations down there, you just can't do it anymore. <laughs> he said, "I'm not a wuss. The PD is broke." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you had the scat pack wide body at 485. Tell them they only give the girls girls the RTs. I'm not I'm, I'm staying away from that. <laughs> so you're telling me you got a girls call? Oh. <laughs> oh, remember, <laughs> he will be coming home. You're going to hear him come through the door in a minute. Hey, old man, come here. <laughs> you going to bust it in. <laughs> oh, you don't have to bust in. Just come in with the key and just go. I'll show you a girl is. <laughs> He said, he not by choice. Not by <laughs> choice. <laughs> See, he knows who to respect. He knows who the man is. <laughs> oh. He knows he can only play with me that much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I tell you what, though, I've, I've sat in that thing out there. It is a beautiful car. And it's nothing but an arsenal. All the stuff they got in there. Yeah. I mean, you go into the back, you open up the trunk, you press a button, everything slides out where everything else is in there with lock, lock compartments, compartments. Yeah. Ammo, everything. Everything's compartmentalized for it. 
Yeah, and then not, right not behind just him. Not in the back like it used to. Yeah. <laughs> and then right behind him, between his seats, they got the they got the the, the cage for everybody. Right, but right there in the middle of that cage is AR sitting right there. Yeah. How much? How many horsepower did you say it had? Uh, three seventy-five, three seventy. My 2013 Ford Edge has 305 or 306 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> I had more horsepower than my Lincoln. What you talking about? <laughs> my Lincoln was 385. Yeah, but the problem is, is your Lincoln was probably twice the weight of what that RT is. <laughs> you know, you're right. I had a I had a Lincoln Continental. Okay. Oh, okay. That was the town car. No, I had a town car, and I bought the Lincoln Continental first, and I used to get on the ramp where you have to go a big loop and come down into the interstate. And I'd, I'd floor it on that ramp. I'd hit it, and when I hit that ramp, I was 85 miles an hour. That was with the with the uh, Continental. When mm -hmm. I got the Lincoln, the town car, I tried the same thing. When I hit that ramp, I was 65 miles an hour. <laughs> well, Donald, you know, Donald, oh, everybody was wondering what your progress was on the bug today. Yeah, I was just about to ask that. Coat number two. Progress on what? His bug. He, he was putting. He was painting the the buggy. Oh. Well, he's putting a coat, uh, protective coat down under the carpet. <laughs> so. You're right there, Warren. He got one down yesterday, and he was talking about a second one today, right? Mm -hmm. There's your little sports car. Yeah, that's his son's Miata. Litter on my bed. Comes, come, 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 see. Yeah, we're going to have rain all day tomorrow. So, Donald, how did that meatloaf come out using that mesquite? I never used mesquite on the meatloaf. Donald's not talking. How, how did the meatloaf do what? How did the meatloaf taste with the mesquite using mesquite? I never used mesquite. Oh, it was good. It was mainly, it's mostly hickory with a touch of mesquite. Oh, uh, okay. So accent. Yeah, yeah. It, right. it was good. Oh, dude, mesquite That's is good. fucking awesome with any kind of beef. Yeah. <clears throat> well, well, fish I never, too. I never used it on a meatloaf, though, smoking a meatloaf. I just uh, used hickory and apple. It's good uh, with fish. My favorite yeah. thing was doing a, a steak with mesquite, man. Oh, mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. So Steve, you said it's good with fish? Because I yeah. might smoke a fish this weekend. Yeah. Delicious, Tim. So I know it ain't uh, a fish you caught. That pool, is that, you, uh, is that fishing uh, pool still a virgin? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the cat the cat uh chewed through the, the line, so I got to reline them. <laughs> the cat oh, fucking chewed yes. through that too. Jesus Christ! Yep. Yeah, hang well, that puppy up on the wall. So, I bet your cat. I bet your cat loves uh well, loves the fish too. Winter's coming up, so I'm going to try for some uh, king whiting. I'm not a big fish person. I like seafood, but 
freshwater. I'm not a big freshwater person. Oh, this is salt. It's coral sea. Uh, I've never had depends that. On, depends on the fish. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like snapper, whiting, GT. What's the other one? Well, Sarah and her mom eat a lot of different fish, and I just, I'm not a big fan of fish. I mean, oh, yeah, I, I like fried fish, but just not baked fish. I'm not a big fan of that. Mm. I like black brim. That tastes good. I like gr grilled, grilled. Oh fish. yeah, that's how I usually I usually gutted it, and kept it whole, <laughs> and then just put lemon in the belly and uh, some garlic, mm -hmm. and grill it. Usually mm -hmm. in the sand with some coals. Fuck, man, it's windy here right now. Hmm. Pissing down here. Well, Brother Lloyd. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, Lloyd. How's it going? Hey, Lloyd. Hey, Lloyd. Hey, Lloyd. Lloyd. Elvis. Oh, he's Everybody. been making his his rounds on live streams, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so he was on Donald's. He uh, was on Apple Bills. Yeah. Oh, he was on Bills, too? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like dinner. I'm making scallop potatoes for dinner tonight. In the shop. Scallop potatoes? Yeah. I don't know, Dominic. What do you think about that? I don't mind yeah. scallop potatoes, actually. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds Sounds really good. good. He didn't bite. Would do, didn't do you bite. prefer scallop potatoes or potato cakes? <laughs> I mean, two different things. Uh, scallop, uh, scallop, yeah, well, scallop with a I lot of cheese. A lot, a lot of cheese. Scallop potatoes. That's, that's, scallop potatoes and potato cakes are two different things. It's just like making a, pot uh, a potato bake. Sort of just yeah, like it. Potato bake. Scallop potatoes and potato bake. Yeah. That's in the the French word escalope rather than yeah, scallop in that scallop. case. <clears throat> yeah. Correct. Well, I gotta I gotta start the barbecue oh. up because uh, I don't have enough. Hey Mark. Just let mm -hmm. you know I started listening to uh uh Elric. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Which the series from Thank you for letting me know they were on YouTube. Good, isn't it? Easier than actually getting a book and reading it, especially for me. Yeah. Mm. Well, I like it because I can uh, listen to it while you do it while doing other stuff. So I'll probably be listening to it tonight while I'm out there painting that buggy. Mm. Good idea. If I don't listen to books on audiobooks or something like that i'm usually listening to a podcast and really mm. which is more intellectually stimulating listening to dominic stare <laughs> at the camera or exactly and i say dominic because it doesn't matter what pod or what stream i go listen to on youtube dominic's gonna be on it yeah yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> Yeah. I went over to there was a, a stream on the other night uh for uh it was left-handed basket weavers. And I was like, that look that sounds really strange and unique. And I went on there and there's Dominic staring at the camera. <laughs> oh guys, I'm gonna jump off. I gotta go okay. run over to this banquet and go eat some good food. Well, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. We'll, I'm gonna try. We'll, we'll see you in the morning. I'll be there. Right. Okay. Later. Bye -bye. Later, Joe. Take care. Oh, just to let you know in advance, I don't think I'll be on in the morning because I've got the doctor's appointment at half past one here. Sorry, not oh, good enough. Nice. You should book Paul around your doctor's appointments. Exactly. Move yeah, your doctor's appointment. at one here, don't they? Doesn't matter. 
Move your Mark, get your priorities straight. Yeah. Get them straight. Disgusting behavior. <laughs> it's easy to get an appointment in the UK, so come on, get it changed. Yeah. <laughs> Very funny. You only have to ring up at 8 o'clock in the morning. You'll be 99th in the queue. Yeah, you get the same. And then they'll tell you there's nothing available for another couple of years. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Cool cat ass if you were okay, Mark. Oh, it's just the check in my feet. It's a diabetic appointment. Oh, okay. For neuropathy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he is outside, cool cat. Yeah, I have got neuropathy in both feet. Yeah, I've I just started coming on. Yeah. After after 50, 50, 50 years of 51 years as a diabetic. Yeah. yeah my, bro my brother's had the same issues with his feet. Yeah, I'm coming up to 45 years, 45 years of being a diabetic, something like that. Yeah, I, I remember you. we were typing back and forth and you were telling me that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming up on 50 years of being an asshole. Well, congratulations, <laughs> Donald. You got five years to catch well, we'll me. Have, we'll have to have a, a celebration. Well, I didn't start out as one, Dominic. I, I didn't start uh, becoming an asshole until I was about three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already past 50 years. <laughs> uh, somebody just yelled something something about you already passed. Yeah, he's jacking with me. He's like, Oh, you, then you're already past 50 years of being an asshole if you started being one at three. It's like, Okay, yeah, you can do math. Fault. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> your fault. You raised one. <laughs> cool cat <laughs> assholes aren't born or made. He's, he's no, right but... at 24 years of being an asshole. Yeah, so he's got a lot of work to catch up from on birth. Him. Well, yeah, well, he had a good instructor. <laughs> yeah, he had a good instructor. <laughs> on that a of that? No, he was he was he was a sweetie when he was a baby. Now look at him. Yeah. Don, does your son still have uh, his hat that he had on lawn and stuck? Uh, yes, he still got his black cap, Chris. They're talking about the, the your black cap that you wore on lawn and tech tip. Yeah, Lloyd, the MS will do that too. You I was are right. Say, I, I have like five of them now. I watched the video the other day. That was a pretty good video. That's not even my good one. It was funny how Linus was just sitting there making. Sometimes he would just make a joke. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, and poor Christopher, he was feeling sick. He. Flew up there and he got the flu. And he Lord. woke up with a, a the travel sickness, his horrible headache, and dead I, on his I feet. And Linus is sitting there going, <laughs> I was missing yeah, my flight. Yeah. Uh, that was funny when he was going, ah. <laughs> and I feel bad. All right, I'll remove the Yeah, but Lloyd, you're a, you're a, you're a, you're a, you may be a perfect one, but at least you're a happy perfect one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, also, and that's the greatest thing is if you read the comments on that video, because I told him when we went up there, I told him it would be funny. We were sitting here talking about it. It would be really funny when you build this brand new computer for gaming. The first game you play on it is Minesweeper. Yeah, and so that's that why funny. he did that. And the thing, yeah. and if you read the comments, people are so pissed because he's playing Minesweeper on that computer. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I read the comments. I also like to point out building a computer for uh, the camera. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's the worst way you can build a computer. Uh, that was funny though. Yeah, tell me my way was wrong. It wasn't wrong. It was just not aesthetically. Pleasing. Okay, go away. You can't hear what they're saying. <laughs> They're saying you're annoying as hell and stop stop you from talking. No, no we're not. You stay, stick around. <laughs> stick around. Oh. Thumbs up. Uh, that guy in the middle, he just said, "Stick that thumb up your ass." No, no, I said, "Stick around." I said the thumb came up. 
<laughs> yeah, stick uh, around. That's good. Yeah, it worked for Don, but not Dominic. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, nope. not working for me. Now, what's your uh, what is your son what does your son do? Is he you go to school still, or is he working? No, he works at. Uh, currently, he's working at a uh, place here in town that rebuilds superchargers oh. for cars. Uh, they mm -hmm. hired him, does like soldering on and and uh, work on their boards that control the actuators. But then they have him doing all kinds of other stuff. I think he's going to quit that job. Okay. Sounds like a good job, though. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the thing. Every job sounds cool, but every job has its issues. Ups and downs, yeah. Mm hmm. Here Don't everybody talk at once. Yeah, we're not going to. What about twice? I, am I, thought, yeah, I know you guys are waiting with, with uh, anticipation to hear words of wisdom from Donald. Mm. <laughs> Listen, I, I, know can't, I, I cannot know what... carry every single live stream on the internet. I run out of material. I want to know what he's making. I am reheating tamales tonight. Oh, steam I make I make tamales once a year, and I freeze up enough to last for the entire year, and I vacuum seal them. And then in the vacuum bag, you just throw them in a pot of hot water and boil them and Shut up and cool. reheat them that way. They come out tasting just as fresh. Yummy. So. Boy, that's dedication. That tamales are a lot of work. Uh, it's a two. It, it's usually a two-day process. I yeah. will smoke my meat and because I use uh, smoked pork shoulder. Ooh. And chicken, and I will prep my meat one day. And so I'm smoking a pork shoulder for the first half of the day, then uh, mixing it with the chicken and seasoning it up in the evening. And then the next day, I will mix up the masa dough and start assembling. Look at this cop down in uh, down in Miami was chasing a. Four wheeler, but look at the cop. Though. It's in a somewhat predictable path. Out of the car. Spike strips be put out. This guy stops. Oh, and all right, looks guys, like, looks like this is it. Let's go full like screen. He was going to be nice to him, you know. Get off the bike, and then he said something smart ass. He was like, "What'd you say?" <laughs> <laughs> look at the way he just comes at him. All right, he's like, "Fuck you, smart says ass. He doesn't know what a tamale is. Mm -hmm. Uh, he probably he pulled over to use the portage on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, explain it to him, Donald. Well, it's uh, corn flour masa uh, mixed with uh, usually the some of the chicken broth from when I cook the chicken and uh, assorted seasonings. Then you usually spread it on a corn husk. And put your meat mixture in, which I use a seasoned mixture of chicken and pork. Then you fold it up in the corn husk and you steam it. Yep. And it's very tasty. Oh, and they're then, delicious. They're delicious. I, love I often noise. I didn't have I don't have any chili left over. I usually freeze bags of chili too, and I couldn't find one. So tonight we're just having it without. We're gonna have some beans and some rice and. Maybe some cheese dip with them. 
Oh, my but, mom, my mom used to make them too. Is she would get the California, you know, uh, green peppers, the California peppers, and she'd mm -hmm. roast them and then split them up, fill them with cheese, uh, and then freeze them. And then when you were done, because they made the same thing of making like a chili now, but she'd make the tamales with the green chili and the cheese and then wrap it in the masa. Stuffed and, inside? Ooh, that sounds cool. Oh, they were delicious. That sounds like a neat idea. Roast. Okay, so roast the Ro the roast pepper. the California peppers. You got yeah, because that way you take the the you know the peel off of it, the skin the, off. The of skin it. off, yeah. Then when they're when they're done, you then you stuff it with cheese and then freeze it just like you do in your other stuff. Just to get thick you, enough to wrap the husk around. Right, and then when yeah. you're and then when you're um, ready to make make the masa up, then you just get it out, put it in, fold them up, and. Steam yeah. them away, and when you cut, I it might out, have to try that, some of those. That cheese just comes oozing out. <laughs> yeah, cool cat. You don't eat the husk; it is just a vehicle for beefy deliciousness. Yes, yeah, so you do not. Yeah, the husk <laughs> gets rolled yeah, out. The husk is to keep it together. Yeah, yeah you the, definitely don't eat it. And also imparts a little flavor. If you, if you wrap it with something, you can wrap it with other stuff, but it doesn't taste as good because the corn husk does impart some flavor, but. You unroll the husk and the masa comes out. It's a, it's a dough with the meat inside. Yep. Sarah's dad had a, I had gotten some tamales <clears throat> one day and he had never even heard of them. Didn't know what they were because he was from the south, right? He wasn't used to them. And I gave him one and he grabs it and he just bites right into the husk and he goes, oh, it tastes like shit. I said, you're not supposed to eat the husk. <laughs> and he starts laughing he unwraps it and he eats it. he's like oh yeah that tastes a lot better I was like yeah you're not supposed to eat that part <laughs> oh, just like when I gosh. just like when I gave one of the girls I work with at work one day a baby bell she didn't take the wax wheel off and she bites into oh, it God. Goes, oh, that's so <laughs> gross and I said you didn't take the wheel off and she goes what I said there's a wax wheel you're supposed to peel it off the outside she goes oh, I didn't know that <laughs> no it's really good though cool cat is that um tamales are Mexican, right? Yeah, originally. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mexico. And uh, what seasoning? I, you know, cumin, uh, chili powder, uh, garlic powder. I'm just okay. Now, what sauce do you use? You make your own or can? Oh, to the sauce to go on the tamales? Yeah. Uh, I don't. Oh, you don't use the sauce on them? Hot sauce. No, we'll, we'll, we'll put a cheese sauce or something over the top. A lot of times, okay. I will. Uh, I freeze my chili when I make chili. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I'll thaw out some chili at the same time as I thaw out some tamales and have tamales with chili. Oh, there we go. I just like some hot sauce on tamales. Because you can use a ta the tapatio sauce that you can get. Oh, you can yeah, tapatio. Yes. You, you mm. can buy the cans of it. And, mm -hmm. you know. I've made I've made a tomatillo sauce once. Mm -hmm. and I didn't do a good job of it. I might have to try that again. Well, you know, yeah. the canned sauce by La, La Victoria is pretty doggone good. They're, re they're red or they're green. Yeah, they, they are good. I've had them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tomato, yeah, tap or uh, the tapatio, that's really good on breakfast foods too. Mm -hmm. Like a, if you have a good breakfast burrito or something like that, it's really good oh, on yeah. that. Yes, oh, masa yeah. is is just a flour. It's corn flour, and you make the dough mm -hmm. out of it. Yeah, cornmeal, and, and it is a job making those. I'll tell you that. Oh, it is it's not quite meal. It's more. It is more fine. Yeah. There's my peppercorn. I, I, used to go, well, I used to go to my friend's house back when I was younger. Huh. And his family was all Mexican. They'd have like a damn assembly line going, making mm -hmm. those things. Be like 20 of them just do, 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 down the assembly line. And they'd make like 100 of them in no time. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah, I'm usually making them by myself. So I have to. Uh... Uh, do it in batches so I will portion my meat and spend the morning portioning meat and have it, all my meat portioned out. Then I get the husk, get those all set out and do it in steps like that. But yes, Warren, so. he's talking about his meat. Yes, that right there. Yeah, it's real fine. Yeah, it's very fine. It's, it's like a flower, but it's made out of corn. Yep. 
So you don't use cornbread. You use uh, just... a little bit coarser of a grind of cornmeal. Do you use the meat that you've just done your meatloaf with? No. Meatloaf is the is a hamburger mix with mm -hmm. bread and stuff. Uh, for the tamales, I use a mixture of shredded chicken. Mm -hmm. I'll just go ahead and uh, boil a couple whole chickens and do a couple of pork shoulders. Smoke a couple of pork shoulders that day that I'm doing the meat, and then shred the. Basically, it's pulled pork and chicken mix. Okay, that sounds good with the mix. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine uh, worked the work for the sheriff's department. Like for us, we're we're north of the border here in down in San Diego. We're about seventy five miles of the border. But mm -hmm. from there, from Tijuana, there's next town, major town down is Ensenada. My my friend, his partner's mom lived down there. He 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 was from Mexico originally, and he go down there and every Sunday because they had a, a vacation home down there. He'd pick mm -hmm. them up and she'd be out there, have her stand up there, you know, little curbside stand with the big yep. pots out there, steaming them up and cooking them right there on the side. And she'd have <clears throat> um, chicken, pork. She'd make the, um, but uh, use carne asada, not the ground. She'd actually use the chunk beef. And then mm -hmm. she'd make the sweet uh, uh, raisin um, uh, tamales, which is but those were right. more of a holiday tamale type of thing. That's yeah. what they're known for with cinnamon in it. <clears throat> you leave birds alone. Have to yell at my cat out there chasing birds. Uh oh. But yeah, the uh, yeah, Jim, the uh, pulled pork. Went Smoking the uh, pork shoulder, it, it gives the tamales a, just that smoky little hint of flavor, the, the meat inside. Kind of nice. Yeah, I've I've had <laughs> some really good tamales. Uh, a guy that I used to work with, his mom made them. And I've never been able to make them as fluffy as she made them. Mm. Mine come out a little more dense. I put in a bit of a mixture of something <laughs> like suet in with the yeah, the, like shortening. Yeah, mm. I love I love Lloyd's comment in there. My Mexican neighbors make me tamales, and they they're fantastic. I keep reminding them I'm a gringo, <laughs> and they need to tone it down the spice. <laughs> I grow Thai peppers, like yeah. those Thai chilies, mm -hmm. and, I, and I grind them up. Last year, I, I ground them up, and I end up with basically ground uh, Thai chili. Yeah. And uh, my wife used a spoonful of that in the uh, topping for the meatloafs yesterday. And she doesn't understand that it's not quite like cayenne. Cayenne's heat dissipates where this stuff does not. <laughs> Oh, it's good. I love oh, it. Yeah, and so it, but it's it, powerful. You, you said eating it, and it has just a little bit of a kick, kick to it when you swallow. It's like I liked it. <laughs> That'll wake you up. <laughs> exactly, Jim. Mm. Donald's made us hungry now for tamales. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, well, I don't think uh, I have enough for everyone, but I probably have enough for anybody who can make it to my house by six o'clock. Oh, oh, before you've eaten them up, you mean? <laughs> Actually, we're there's a company. Uh, you know, obviously, all the big superstores like Costco. They there's a company here, and they're out of uh, Los Angeles that makes the tamales here for them. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, for a store-bought tamale, you cannot beat it. They are really good. I, I keep telling people, I'm going to get tired eventually because it, it, like, like I said, it is a chore and a half oh, you better believe to make it. these things. 
but, it's, an ass it's an assembly line. You got to set the whole thing up mm -hmm. and multi you need multiple people in order, you know, if you're going to make a bunch of them. To get efficient, when, yeah. Because when you make them, you well know. When you make them, you're going to make a big batch because you take so much time to get set up to do it. You want to have enough so you can enjoy them and then freeze them. Yes, I make, like I said, I make up enough to last for an entire year. Wow. So I'll freeze them up in, in uh, like bags of eight. Uh huh. Hold on just a second. Sorry. Uh, I'll freeze them up in bags of eight. That way they're uh, nice to pull out, reheat for a quick dinner. Yeah. So you don't have them every week then? No, they're 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 like a delicacy, Mark. More of that. I mean, you could eat them every week, but <laughs> oh, you if, was, if, if Donald walk. was doing that, he'd be making probably four times as much as he made. <laughs> Fifty-two times eight, <laughs> four hundred and sixteen. There you yeah. go. Mm hmm. I usually make a batch of uh, around 120, 130. Mm. That's a good size. So mm. kind of uh, one. Yeah, for one person. <laughs> that's yeah. a lot. One person yeah, I, every three, two months or something. <laughs> if they're that I know, good. I know my... Uh, uh, my daughter-in-law, she she's um, uh, her her folks are from uh, Mexico, and uh, they did a a family thing down in uh, they were down in Mexicali when they were down there mm -hmm. visiting her aunt, and that was the whole thing. The whole family set it up. They spent one whole day making nothing but tamales. It was like yeah, eight of them in there, and this whole assembly line of it just going through. Each one's doing one thing. Like the four uh, assembly. A line. lot of times they'll have different recipes depending on the uh, family. Yeah. Uh, remember, they'll have different recipe and they'll have different knots, different ways of tying them off to di differentiate. Yeah. So when they after they get through cooking, it's like okay, that one was this, that one was this recipe, and they'll yeah. Yeah. So do they, they spent one whole day. Bit like, bit like dim sum. Well, they spent the one whole day making them. And then after they got them ready, then they uh, they get them ready and they put them in and they steam them, and then mm -hmm. it's fiesta time, baby. You eat and, and eat and eat. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, I mean, they're best if you get them fresh. But actually, uh, like Donald's doing, the free by freezing it, you get more flavor in there because that meat and everything has has intensified by being frozen yes and the meat actually yeah it, it leaches when you're reheating it it leaches a little bit of that flavor back yeah. out into the masa but yeah there's nothing compared to a fresh one mm -hmm. i mean i of course there's always the sacrificial ones whenever i'm making yeah. that night we're having fresh tamales <laughs> But, People are saying no. I'm checking flights right now. <laughs> Not to mention the half dozen you eat while you're cooking it. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I gotta back out of here. I gotta hop on for an online meeting here. So good to see everybody. Take care and enjoy those tamales, Donald. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Uh, <clears throat> Lloyd's not on for another hour yet, is he? Uh, exactly. Fifty about fifty-five minutes. I'm trying to figure out if I stay on or not. What happened to Justin? Um, because I, I'm going to go catch a ship. Um. What do you think, Dominic? Uh, well, I've got to go out in a few minutes and come back yeah, to get a okay. how I'm doing. Okay, I'm Mark, Dominic, 
Donald, yeah. we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, then. Uh, All right. Then bye okay. for now. Bye. Bye, -bye. bye David. Yeah, on in an hour. Yeah, yep, an hour, an hour you can be on with Grumpy. Yep. Yep, I'll probably pop on there for a little bit because he was he joined me the other day.